Bobby. <laughs> Hello there, people of the internet. My name is Dwayne Jagero, and this is Dialogues with Jagero with Ricks and Bobby Roberta. Hi. Bobby is from Naivasha. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> and she's looking that. like it. <laughs> How do people from Naivasha look like? <laughs> they smell nice I like that. Clean their feet. Well, I didn't know that. <laughs> Jagero, takani chome picha. That's what you normally want. What was going on in in Naivasha? <laughs> What was going on? Do you do you have good memories of it? No, no. let's let's start from there. This, did you have good memories of home, it? Mama is a Parirali thing. He goes a Parirali. Let me just say I'm tired. <laughs> I'm, I'm really exhausted. <laughs> oh. But I feel good. Oh, and wow. I'm happy. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> That's the most I can say. Naivasha at Naivasha. Yes. Naivasha nilikuwa nimeenda ku Barizi. Eh. Just to relax a bit for the night. For the night. For the night. You then we went there yesterday. Yeah. And then oh. I came back today. Hello. <laughs> That was the sex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you need to be alone, if you need you are alone. <laughs> It was good. Wow. <laughs> there was Uh. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy. Sin mesema I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, you came from Naivasha to 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 here. Yeah. <laughs> Kama si Jagero mm. ningeko bado na ji enjoy. Hey, for sure sacrifice. So you see the the commitment mm-hmm. I have. And is you know what is going on? I have I have had a lot of people talking about your podcast. How okay. f- how free you are. Love and orgasms. <laughs> That was not actually the podcast. Which one? The one I had with her. Oh. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's true. Yeah. I love the comments. I love the feedback. Everything everyone was saying made me feel very encouraged. Nika realize kumbe kuna wasi wengi wana seek information and they want to have conversations about it, but maybe they do not have the spaces or the confidence to be able to just be themselves. So let me do it for you guys and then you guys can copy me <laughs> and join me in the discourse. Yeah. You know I think what has prevented us from talking about sex is the fact that people I don't know nyango why do we find it very difficult people are having sex every day having so many children but when you start talking about it they start having problems. Now nah, it's it's just shame. It really comes from shame and control. Um There's so many layers of um, uh, colonization that took us away from just loving our cultures, loving pleasure. Mm-hmm. I was talking to somebody the other day about um, this conversation around pleasure, and there's a sexual practice in Uganda called um, kunyanza, kunyanza, yeah, and the Rwandans call it kachabali. Right, and this is something that has been there for a very long time, but we didn't even know it existed. Where the man pleasures the woman by placing the tip of his penis on the woman's clitoris, until most, because the clitoris is, you know, we know what it is for those who know, and it's a very pleasurable place, of course. And this is a practice that was there before white people came here, so definitely. Pleasure. Why, why do they have the tip of their penis on the clitoris? The sensitivity, all right? So that you maximize pleasure, fam. You know what I mean? So the, many of those things people don't know this stuff uh, about their cultures, pleasure in, in their cultures because a lot of it was, you know, dumbed down and, you know, religion came and it was like now sex is a bad thing, you only do it when you're married. And <coughs> I, I laugh about that because it is assumed that sex in marriage is going to be really good. Mm. And it isn't. It's not obvious that sex in marriage is going to be good. I mean, I mean there are so many people sexually frustrated in, in marriages because even after you start having it uh, beyond marriage, you, you are still not taught shit about it. Mm. Right? Um, uh, properly. So, We have a long way of unlearning these uh, misconceptions and myths and sh- the shame we hold in our bodies and in our minds regarding how we perceive sex. And I'm, I'm so grateful actually to be living in this era of the Robatas bec- and myself because w- growing up we didn't think this was proper even to 
think about leave alone speak about it publicly because if you are sexually expressive it was taken that you know when you malaya or when you kadinya you they call you gay all the time like cuz I'm, I'm expressive with my masculinity and it's just triggering to so many people but then i love it because fuck that shit <laughs> i just love it. it it still makes the conversations happen so yeah. however we are talking about it let's talk about it whether it's them calling him gay yeah. what does and it matter what, what and i like yeah. i like him because i like what she said about your masculinity because what people try to sell us as masculinity you know many people try to t- t- tell men what they're supposed to be a real man should be a real man and most times it's coming from people who are not even real men that's why i like what rick said because you have to find your masculinity for yourself you have to define it for yourself what does it mean for me to show up as a man in a manly way what what does it mean for me and exactly what it is that's exactly how you show up see if it was in a toxic that Guys try to impose on men that a real man shouldn't dance on the what? That <laughs> a real man shouldn't listen to this type of music, bro. They hit that. They hit that South African for his matacos. Who? That guy that is trending from South Africa. The dancer. The yes. Tupac. Is it? Oh, oh, really? Is it him? The, the guy that is that is walking on stairs yeah. and doing yeah okay. with the, with the, with very voluminous kind of uh, you know behind. Oh, the guy with the with the. <laughs> With the He's a gym guy. Yes, Maximus. Oh. With the with the he does the squats. Yes. Ah, yeah. The one with the big ass. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I like it. <laughs> you like it? Yeah. You'll find he's manlier than maybe other men way far. Cuz your body is your body, yeah. right? Why do I hide it? I have a nice ass. Why should I hide it? It's yeah. there. Sasa. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't yes. make him less of a man. There are people who think he does. So those are the people I'm trying to say they should realize that no one can define it's like me no one can define what femininity means to me if you see me you like the way I smell you like the way I look you like the way I smile if that's what you want to say is feminine then cool but you know kini pata tena nimekaa juu nimekaaje na nafanya nini you decide that's not feminine bra that it's for me it's for me to decide what I feel like means for me showing up as a woman after mm. i define it for myself then i can be authentic about it i can show up as myself see at him mtu akuja semati real women wear wigs not like you you have your hair bro whether you like it or not i'm a real woman and i define it for myself however i like to show up as long as i know myself and i define it for myself then that is exactly what it means mm. you shouldn't ever reach a point where you're taking what people say uh, because it affects you psychologically if you if you listen like now kama rick sange kwa nasikiza watu na zile vitu wanamwambia consistently cg you are this you're this and then he takes it yes i'm like that i'm like that. we'd have lost him we'd not have onyango as he is as confident and bold and loud and very courageous about himself we'd have someone who's either trying to portray other things for other people or someone who's just not showing up completely mm. so yeah that's why i think it's important however the conversations are being had whether it's from people insulting you fine at least we are talking about it let's dissect from there let's talk about vulnerability in sexual relationships <laughs> my wife told me one day my wife came up came came home with uh, uh <coughs> I think she printed it out. I remember uh, that thing. Yeah. Yeah. It well, vexed me a lot. Did like oh, it. I was like, dude, <laughs> your wife just wants to know you better. Fill me in. Just yeah, yeah, let them. Nico inje bado. Uh she brought this thing that we are supposed to fill in our sexual fantasies. The things I would like to do. Mm-hmm. You know? Uh, at the end of the day I didn't I didn't fill up I didn't fill that form uh, because I felt like I'm going to lay myself bare like I'm going to be very vulnerable to the things I love and that's not how I was brought up and how you were brought up sometimes uh, in a kwama na wewe you know so well there are, there are sexual fantasies that I would like you know but I didn't want to share them 
And at the end of the day, I didn't share them. My wife understood that I was a rigid motherfucker, a villager. <laughs> <laughs> at the time. <laughs> Things might have changed. They have definitely changed. He, he started. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> you know, Roberta, what is, you talked about it for an hour and 15 minutes in your book. Do you know something I love about Roberta Ricks? Yeah. This, this, this beautiful can actually speak about something that she's passionate about for an hour. Yeah. And it hooks you up and you don't die, you don't get away from it. Yeah. What is so I find vulnerability a very first of all, I don't like the word for some reason. And uh, like I've always said, yeah. in 2023, I've always wanted to open myself up to new things, things that I don't like, and question myself, why don't I like it so much? What is triggering me about it? You know? So like I was telling the Miriam Rose that there is, I have never learned so much within a very short time. Since I started my podcast four months ago, I have learned so much about humanity, about people, about what they are passionate about, about their dreams, you know? Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> funnily enough, I have learned so much from women. Mm. You know, mm. I've realized that women know a lot. This, this, mm. this, this motherfucker is shooting this podcast. <laughs> they don't you? know these things. <laughs> they don't want to know. more. <laughs> 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 yes, this guy. About Kuber. 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 See, he has even forgotten. And he was listening with me. You know? Yeah. So I've realized that women are really looking for knowledge and are so knowledgeable about so many things. And I've sat on this same, it's not this same chair, but this chair, you know, figuratively. <laughs> yeah. And I have learned so much about <coughs> this. But Onyango, what do you understand by vulnerability in relationships? I think vulnerability is um, an opening to nakedness, mm. uh, metaphorically and, of course, physically. And mentally as well, I think it's the doorway to deep connection because it's very difficult for love to happen without vulnerability. There's a guy called Osho whom I love so much. He was an Indian guru and he said, it's very difficult if you want to remain clever in relationships, mm. yeah, to remain sly and slippery. It's right. very difficult because you end up being four people in that relationship. The two masks, you and your partner become two masks, and then the real people are very distanced from each other. So you're four of you, but you imagine you're two, you know? So vulnerability breaks the masks, and then the two people have an opportunity to meet. And of course, in our cultures, it's incredibly difficult to do that. First of all, because nobody taught you how to be that, right? And it's also frowned upon. I hypothesize many times, especially in our African cultures, with the traumas, the uh, multi-layered traumas we've had to undergo. If I look, go back to the colonial times, speaking up was life-threatening. Mm. Yeah, if you spoke up against the white people, it was life threatening. You were killed. Your people were taken away. Your wife was raped. Your husband was raped. Your children were killed, and everything. So, silence became a survival mechanism mm. for us, for our people. And then we just inherited that shit. You know what I mean? So, mtu unachukua tu mtu ni umeona umebamika na e amu unafikiria ni time ya kuwa unachukua tu mtu. You know, but then you go now to live with them and then your ghosts just come out. You can't hide. <laughs> you can't hide the ghost. Yeah. They are there with you every single day. And then you realize, oh, man, I'm in shit, you know. So some people stay in that shit. Yeah. And, you know, there's a saying that says if you, sh if you sit on shit for too long, it stops stinking. Yeah. Yeah. And some people try to struggle to get out of that shit. But I can assure you that most of us are really struggling even just to express ourselves. 
Um, and that's one of the reasons why relationships are really having a hard time because we don't know how to say things. We really don't know. Mm. <coughs> Roberta, for one and a half hour, for one hour, you're talking about vulnerability. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Where was that coming from? Why did you decide to talk about it? Because, like I said in the last episode, um, I realized that there's a gap whereby basically what Rix is talking about, there's a gap pahali hatujaji meets bado. Mm. And you asked, uh, what does vulnerability mean? For me, it means to come as your authentic self. They, we call it vulnerability to make it look like it's some sort of weakness, but it's, it's some, it takes a different type of strength for you to be vulnerable, which makes it, it turns it around. It's a different level of strength. Vulnerability to me means being able to show up as your authentic self without fear of judgment or interrogation, with, without fear, just being able to exist as yourself. So I realized there's this gap where we're not able to meet ourselves because we cannot show up as ourselves. And it starts in the small ways. It's in the, it's in the small ways as mtu aneza kuliza unaishi wapi na umdanganye. Kwa sababu umehangout na squad, watoko na pesa, na wu unatoka kijiji, so unogo pa kusema. So you say something like, eh, hey, you know, you lie. It's a white lie, but why, why, where's the lie coming from? It might be that you're ashamed or whatever, but the end, the, the, it stems from you being afraid to show up as yourself. Because once you work on it, it's not a vulnerability anymore. It's, it's your strength. You'll be able to say, hi, mine she kibra. Mine she kwa kichochoro. Apo ndo pali unaishi, una own it, na una show up as that person. So it's in the small ways, it's in the little white lies we tell, it's in the the way we get into relationships and we're afraid to be honest. Not even romantic relationships, just simple relationships even with ata kama kukujapa. Kuna mtu mwenye aneza kujana bike, na umuuliza, sema, misi hizi panda piki piki, na kuna mgine, alikujana uba, kuna mgine alikujana gari yake, alafu watu wa danganye mi, I drive my own car, na ulimuona tuwa kishuka piki piki. You see, it's in the, it's in those small things, people are very ashamed of themselves, and it stems from not even big, big issues, needs of it ndogo ndogo. And I say that, I feel like we need to start, I keep saying, I keep repeating myself, we need to start having these discussions so that easy vitus na kwa normal topics. It's, I can show up and tell you guys about my life story in three minutes without fearing what you guys will think, what you'll say, what opinions you have, but just the confidence that I have to be able to show up as my authentic self, that's what becomes magnetic. It pulls people who are like you towards you. Utasema hivu upate kuna watu wengine watatu wanaishi kwa kichochoro. Then now you have something in common. You know now you can talk about, oh, pia mine shiko yo kichochoro, pia mine shiko. So it stops being something you're shameful about and more something that you can talk about, transform, change, improve, be very loud and bold and proud about. And that's just it. We need mm. to start loving ourselves more so that we're very comfortable within the levels that we're at. The kuchipenda tu venye uko na kukua conf comfortable to show up yeah. as yourself basically you know that yeah. when you talk about that it reminds me of my fear uh, i think i've told this story to nyango knows about this story the the, the the lying of where you live yeah mm. you know yeah and it it really really affected me mm. uh i had panic attacks because of because of uh the fear of people knowing where i live mm. i was in a very rich church all Saints cathedral church yeah. You know? Yeah. Where the kids were coming there in big cars. Mm. And I was walking to church from Uduru. Another another horror story. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Oh. <laughs> Imagine I can relate. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I, I was living in uh, I was living in Kibera, uh, in Kawangware. Yeah. In a very pathetic uh, environment. First of all, there was no steamer during the day. The Nyonga did until five. This is really privilege from Robert. Because I'm an individual meters. 
unaona so nyo wote mnatumia visa moja na jamaa anataka kunyonga stima i pay the least amount as a landlord by the end of the month Okay. So mnakati wa stima. You pay okay sabu rent yenu usually. Yes. I, 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 Our rent was 2500. Okay. Per month. And then you couldn't iron with the with the steamer like Rudy. It could be less strong. No, it could strong but they have sensors in the meter. It's 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 it it senses a spike in usage it it in a jikata yenyewe. So they used to be like topasi. <laughs> Cyber, cyber cafe binini you know uh, he, was, he was working at a cyber cafe by the way the house wasn't mine yeah. somebody somebody had <laughs> so <laughs> do you know if you put passy everybody goes out <laughs> like it was like it was like 46 houses ukiweka stima kila mtu anaenda giza passy such things they really stick with us so yeah they announce in charge that they announce in charge that we are we are we are going to start what is called door to door like robata nakuja kwako ni kama jumuiya My heart sank. Pasto bora kuna stima. Kuna stima first of all. Eh mtumishi wangu. And what I was asking myself, where are these people going to go to the toilet? Okay, where, where was your toilet? The toilet was one serving 46 households. Na kila mtu akienda choa anaenda na, na na bucket of water yake amebeba. And sometimes you go there in the morning and you have a line of 10 people going to shit. Each and every person having their own bucket. By the time line in Aisha ta uski kuna. Bana vitu zimerudi ndani kwa. No, mwili kwa sawa. But you know Roberta going in there after somebody has shit and you are going immediately. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got to squat because somebody is having a bucket outside you. Na umaliza shughuli ya raka. Si ndio unakaa kwa nini? Ndio kuna lai. Na wazi shoot loudly. Lazima uzi. My god. You need trauma. And then the people in church are going to come and they're going to tell me where is the toilet? <laughs> and they're going to get rude and niambie kuna watu. <laughs> <laughs> so I wasn't able to be vulnerable. Yeah. And the funny thing about vulnerability is that people people <coughs> people can see who you are even yeah. though you are trying to yes even though you are trying to feature it. Mm. People can see it. Sometimes It's very clear. Yeah? Yeah. Especially people who are very self-aware, they are able to tell, they can enter a room and just read the room. You can tell who's anxious, who's kind, who's sweet, who's thoughtful, who's very rude. It's just an energy thing, it's a vibe thing. So yeah, if people see you and they see kwacho yenu you new piga line, atajua. Atinyo piga line. I hope that's not taken in, a, in the wrong way. <laughs> it's just a joke. <coughs> Ricks Ricks psychologically what is why do we don't why don't we want to is it a defense mechanism because i feel like it's defense mechanism of is course. it defense everybody because of the kind of world we live in where the have nots are dehumanized mm. you're indignified because you don't have mm. you know uh, i i you know my dad taught in very prestigious schools 
and I had to attend those schools. And, you know, I, I found myself, you're living in Huruma Estate, but your desk mate is in, lives in Kileleshwa. And they're coming with snacks every afternoon, <coughs> every morning. And, you know, there's nothing. You don't have nothing. So you want to blend in. You want to have a sense of belonging. You want to speak like them, you know. And especially if these things are happening to you at such a young age, it traumatizes you in major, major ways because those self-esteem issues come. You feel like uh, you're not worthy mm -hmm. of speaking because now the fear was so deep I couldn't even raise my hand in class mm. even when I'm the only person who knew a, 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 an answer to a question couldn't speak couldn't look at girls and say hi nothing the, sh the, the shame was just out of this world you know so that's the psychological effect of classism in a society or the caste system in a society mm. right where we, and this thing happens to all of us, regardless of the class you're in. Yes. All of us. Ata bebe mwenye ulikuwa naishi kawangwari, kuna mutu ulikuwa naangalia unaona ujamaa. Atoshi mboga. Neri mimi mboga. Neri bebe. Atoshi, ata bebe, like, your energy will just feel like you're not supposed to be close to them yeah. because of how they looked. And it's subconscious, because that's what you are taught from childhood. Mm that somebody below you is supposed to be distanced from you. That's the big, because nobody wants to, it's the rejection that you fear the most, right? Mm -hmm. The moment somebody, or you fear somebody knows that you don't have this like they do, you fear that they would look at you differently. And that would mean your brain takes it as danger, okay? And once your brain detects danger, you go into survival. Mm -hmm. So you draw back. Mm -hmm. You get what I mean? And so now that's why we really fear being vulnerable and even worse off in, in relationships. Mm. Yeah. Talking about girls, mm. <coughs> I never did it in, 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 in college. Yeah. Because it was impossible to date. How come? Mm. <laughs> Another traumatic story. <laughs> the, story the story is right there. You can't see it. <laughs> I, I couldn't. See, one person could know chips. But I mean, I come back. Kuna time. I recall when I was in form six because I went to UG to study a level. Mm. I met a chick there who was Kenyan. We came back to Kenya. Of course, we are still living with our parents. Eh? Mm. So, <clears throat> this chick, I spoke to her parents from Lete UN, yeah? And, because um, the parents <coughs> wanted to, to take her to Kampala University at the time, and she didn't want to go there. So, of course, uh, you want to take your girl out, mm. you know, as you know, the hopeless romantic that I was and shit. And at the time, we, asked, we had these restaurants, Chipo Ilionga Thatibo. Ona muna ingia, muna katu iko hizo ma stools, soda moja hiyo iko hapo, soda ilikuwa sijui mbao. So na finje, ukiwa na finje, ama so, ukiwa na so. I remember those days. Yeah, hiyo ni, unajua I'm not working, I'm living with my parents, it's not so so finka, mata fair ni meomba, all that stuff. Ude malingia yo en maze. Yo en, kuligua na wanaume. Masikia wanaume. Wanaume. Wenye wanasema na kupeleka sijui intercontinental bwana. Unajua? <coughs> Kina babu <you> wina. Know? <laughs> Men with big balls. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Uta, utawezana? Uwezani? Sasa bara, uu musara bara kaona o wajama. He? Eh? Nikaanza kuchengwa chengwa tu hivi kama mpira unatupo tupo tu huko. Hey, I'm not available. Hey, I'm busy. Hey, we are going on a school trip. Hey, hey. Before you know it, your phones are not being picked anymore. Una kakitu, my friend. Unajua. So that's how the relation. I, I had to look at myself in Kajuliza. I don't have the bandwidth to uh, to uh, face this um, humiliation. All right? I called it off. So after a while, something like seven, eight months later, she calls me. 
uh, she calls me to the campus and, you know, because we were really good friends before then, you know, and I was like, she, she asked to see me. I was like, okay, cool, let's let's meet up. We went, after terrorism, you could just enter the school. Mm. And now she, she starts narrating to me the stories of now, like, how she got lost with these men who ended up giving her, like, STIs because oh, no. they were taking her to these big hotels and they were flying in and out of the country and all that. And... It was a moment of apology in the manner in which she left she left me, you know. And for many men, I think we growing growing up in this this world the way it is and how it looks at us as providers, especially in that that <coughs> space. I think a lot of men really live with the shame of not having enough to take care of the people they really want to be with, mm. the woman they want to be with. Mm. It's so much shame, you know? And today it's even worse because in the age of social media and our idea of wealth and a good life, people want it fast, the youngest they can be, you know? <laughs> and yet the reality on the ground with the acquisition of these things, they are not together. <laughs> you get what I yeah. mean? So. Some men really lie that they have it, they pre live like and pretend as if they do because they want to watch. If you go deep into them, all of us want nice things. We want the nice babes. We want ni nice, nice women, nice whatever, right? But then that disconnection and the fear of rejection makes people really want to hide, you know, just because they want to access good things. So the way you're treated when you don't have enough <laughs> or what somebody you like calls as enough makes you want to draw in. I know stories of, and even currently right now, where somebody is married, they lied to the wife or the to-be wife that life is going to be okay after we get married. And the nigga anatapatapa too and yet the wife's uh, family is, is really well off, you know. Mm. So now, he's gambling, he's doing all these things to keep a face. You know what I mean? I feel like, I remember, for example, when, like when I was back 17 years old, I remember like loving this chick who, like, tulipendana tu ya ukweli, unajua? <laughs> I like you for who you are. Unajua, na where you are and where I am, we are going to see how these two worlds can, can interconnect. Mm. I think we've lost a lot of that, you know, because people, first of all, we've been hurt over and over by people we gave so much to, especially on those years we didn't know ourselves better. And the fear of loss, because heartbreak is a lot, you know. And um, people feel like I need to know that I can be stable in uh, when I'm going into, into this thing, especially financially. And those finances, we don't even know how to manage them. We don't know much about money at the same time. So because there's so many layers of trauma that are simultaneously... Um, going on in our lives, I feel like it's time that we just slowed down a little bit, you know? Mm. And I'm meeting Roberta and I'm telling Roberta, for me, me, I like you. Me, I like you, you know? And if Roberta likes me, and Roberta likes that high life, because the limona kwa TV juice kisema, sasa yeye, kama we... Kama we Victoria Mahale, sasa kama we zani, eh? Jieleze, jieleze. Mwambie, madam, mimi sasa hapa ndiyo niko. Ninangangana na maisha, hivi, hivi, na hivi. Then Roberta can tell you, fam, okay, eh, inaweza mayuezi. Unaona? Nisiende kujifanya. But what, how, how, at what point does the man do that, Roberta? At what point does he do that? Before he meets the woman. Before he even starts dating. I mean, I say, wewe unajijua vilu, unakuanga saleha, unapesa. 
<laughs> you are very unpleasant to be ar- ab- around. You're always irritated by small things. You get jealous easy. You get angry faster. You're annoyed. So why not work on yourself? And this is not a conversation about money. This is just about you wholesomely working on yourself. Work on your self-esteem. Work on your confidence. Work on the way you speak, the way you act, the way you walk. Everything that you feel like you need to improve within yourself, improve it before you start loving someone else. Because you can never pour from, from an empty cup. It doesn't matter how we spin it or how we try to make it look nice. Hata we mwenye sale unapesa ujipendi sana. So work on iyo kwanza kujipenda sale haunapesa first of all. So that you're able also to still extend grace and kindness. So that even when, and you see the thing is with everything Rick said, it's true. Especially men with the burden of having to feel like they have to show up and have things figured out. Whether <coughs> things are working out or not, they have no one to talk to. They cannot show up as themselves. They cannot say how they feel. And then they carry this baggage and then they they project it on, onto the people they love. Unapata mse ananza kukutreat vibaya kwa sababu vitu job as vizuri. But they easily forget that this is your home. This is where you're supposed to come back for comfort and support. This is where when you go out there fighting and trying to make the money and be a man, when you come home, you're supposed to relax and just lay everything down. Let us take care of you. But they forget. They they forget. They come home still with the anger. They're projecting the uh, annoyance, the lack of. And it shows. So that's why I say... Before you meet people, before at a meeting, before ni date, I've had to do so much work on myself. And you see, you can never know. Um, I'm not saying people who have not healed don't deserve love. I'm just saying you have to hold yourself accountable to some level. Like me, uh, I'm I'm currently single, but I'm definitely very intentionally taking steps towards working to, towards myself, because. Even if I end up in a relationship, I'd like to show up for this person in every way. I'd like to be smart so that they can come to me for advice. I'd like to be kind so that they know they can talk to me. I like to have to be able to hold space for them even when I'm not able to. Why? Because I've taught myself patience and understanding and conversation and emotional intelligence. I want to spoil them with gifts. So I'm working on my financial situation. This is not a conversation about just money. I'm about at men have to pay for this. Women have to cook. In. It's, it's not about any of that. It's about you as yourself. How, who are you? How do you show up? How are you yourself? Are you kind? Are you smart? Are you empathetic? Are you loving? Are you understanding? Then, okay, now I'm all these nice things. Then now I know I, I have the space to be able to love someone else. You know, now I know. I know myself when I'm broke, how I am. I know myself when I'm annoyed, how I am. So now when I have a boyfriend, when I'm broke, I'm not going to project because I know how to handle my emotions and vice versa. So you asked when should these men, uh, you know, approach these women after they've done the work you have to do the work you have to intentionally work on yourself take care of yourself improve yourself in all the little ways whether it's cleaning your nails making sure your clothes are clean uh, cleaning your nails you know, yeah it's in the very small ways cleaning because, your nails yeah. <laughs> that's not in any way sexual it's just a hygiene thing i know i yeah. know i know yeah yeah so i've seen very bad nails exactly so i love you know say una patana ya kiongea kusema all women are bro just clean your nails first <laughs> <laughs> let's not even <laughs> let's not even don't, don't even, even <laughs> <let's> <laughs> clean your nails <laughs> <laughs> don't even speak on women before you know panty yako iko na skid marks but you're here giving the loudest Onyango, opinions. what are skid marks skid marks what are skid marks like zile like it's when, uh, it's when people wear underwear and then they don't wipe well and then now they leave skid marks with na like na wako na hiyo tabia sana yeah the woshi panty ni ni boxer vizuri eh alafu huyo ndo anakupa lakini una unatembea ukiara ama Okay. 
zime iko na shimo mm-hmm. na tv umengao pale kwa iko ni kubwa it's true so i think i think <laughs> Mimi tunacheka but kuna mse ali tweet kuna mse ali tweet story juzi siji ka uliona rix kuna kuna tweets zilikuwa so i forget how exactly but i'll paraphrase someone tweeted something about at CG you people you do you wash uh, your underwear for your men or something and then yeah. one man commented something along the lines of at eh mimi na washe wangu kwanza na juzi aliniambia ati <laughs> now changa and we are two v2 oui. and then someone asked two v2 ni nini <laughs> it was a whole conversation about oui. like vile watu wanacha and we are mafi okay let me come back to my point <laughs> my, <laughs> my point is that you have to why, why is it that why, why is it that there 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 are specific things that only men do but they are but they do you are. know i went to an office and they said men please <laughs> flush the toilet i'm like that's a, that's too specific just tell people just say please kuna tabia zingine yenyewe my boys tu tunakonga kila or or you guys have to be reminded please wash your hands it's like it's just not common sense wait wait how many how many times do i fight with you about your your situation in my kitchen <laughs> you're airing him he knows is is it just Hakuna msichana anakujanga kwa nyumba yangu hiyo nyumba inakuwa disorganized. Jibu washtaka. You know to be fair to me. <laughs> this motherfucker comes to my house. <laughs> and and I, and I, no 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 he sits on the sofa. Kila kitu analetewa. Analetewa maji, msichana anakuja na chukua anapeleka juu analetewa chakula anarudisha ukila kitu huko juu mm. lakini mimi nikienda kwake hakuna anga mtu huko sasa unaacha jifanya kila kitu sasa unaacha kila, kila, kila mahali kila kitu kila mahali but bro. you get the house clean don't you sometimes not a visa <laughs> anyway 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 robata you talked about something very interesting yeah. but i think a lot of people will be asking themselves the question what are how do i work on myself mm. i think it is something that many people really don't know when you talk about work on your when one work on your temper work on this you know be smart do this do you have an idea of how you do it how do you do it that's a great question because there's not just one way to do it there's no this is the what do you call doi formula a plus a eh hakuna njia it it's very varied because it comes from the things that you like the things that you enjoy the things that you want to be around but what i push for is for you to be able to get to the level for you to be able to get to the level where you're able to work on yourself you have to attain a certain certain level of self awareness and where this self awareness comes from is from exposing yourself it's from the moment you start asking yourself questions like who am i what do i like the even the very mundane things like what's my favorite color Do I really like black? I always say black, but like is it black because it's all I've ever been exposed to or if I try yellow, will I find that I like yellow? If I try purple, will I you know you can never know until you put yourself in those situations. So the best way first of all is to wake up to attain a certain level of self-awareness. And how you reach there is by venye nimesema kwanza kujiuliza hizo maswali, who am I at my core? I'm Roberta I love to speak, I love to write, I love black and yellow, I love books, I love being around people. You know when you start asking yourself these questions, it starts removing the things that you do not enjoy. So if it, if I do not like purple for instance, now I know I've tried purple and I know it doesn't work for me. I don't like it, it doesn't look good. And then now I'm able to say yeah, I like yellow more than I like like purple. So you have to be very very aware you have to really probe and ask yourself the questions hata tu kama what do i like to eat unajua watu wengine usema wanapenda ugali kwa sababu ugali ni all they've ever eaten ukianza kumwambia juu ya sushi ah mimi siwezi sushi but ajawai jaribu so haizi jua kama anapenda mahapindi you know you can only give opinions but you can never know for sure until you put yourself in such situations uh, so uh, after awareness you you put yourself in spaces where you're able to explore 
uh, push yourself like wewe jo me grow aje kama unajifungia kwa nyumba peke yako kama today i might say something that annoys someone and then someone calls me out you might call me out and say bobby i didn't like the opinion you had now that's my learning point it should be for me to be like oh okay how did i say it did i say it in an offensive way or was it my tone or what is it that you didn't like everything is basically a learning point it's very different from me starting to get defensive at yawe jagero aunge niambia hivyo ama unanidanganya ama unanichukia you know it's just for me to listen decide am i willing to learn and and listen and do better mm-hmm. then that for forms and shapes your decisions so it starts improving your awareness it improves how you show up and then now you're able to be very confident in your decisions so if someone comes and asks you rick why do you dance on the internet in your underwear love it it's because you love it it doesn't really need to have another reason at because nani did it ama because nani gave me permission no it's because i woke up i felt like dancing it made me feel good that's by the enough. way can i tell you something yeah i met a gentleman in kisumu ah he knows rakes oh so <laughs> is it that oh my god that guy do you know we planned on how we are going to dismantle that guy <laughs> that's not even, that's not new actually like i'm not that's surprised that's so crazy yeah and they said he told me that they actually had a whole day discussion on how to get him and then put him in a group and then dismantle him <laughs> the guy comes and tells me what about the guy he handled us each and every individual he handled each and every person but by the time we were we thought that this guy were going to he's going to leave the group he's going to say fuck you oh. all blah 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 they did that they actually you? did Yes. Those are people I was in school with. Yes. Hey, nani liwapasha? Hey, akuamini. They told me that they actually discussed a whole day and finally invited him. That's such a weird thing to do. And they, he told me in Kisumu that that guy handled each that uyo jama. In fact, the word he said he used uyo jama anajijua. Yes. Now you see when you know yourself like that you turn even the 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 doubters into believers now they start being like I when your confidence yako you know because what they they're, they're operating from projection and self hate they they see him and then wow. they're angry that wow. they can't be like you they can't copy you they can't be confident like you so they start being wow. angry at themselves and they don't know where they're going to take that annoyance so now they sit in groups where they can validate themselves and have the same weird opinions and then they come to you and they see oh you don't even care <laughs> you're not even sad mm. you know you're not affected wow. so now they can't get to you and then they start to be like oh okay <laughs> his confidence is actually something you know yeah, i can learn so from it yeah they are they are shocked that you did, did you want you were able to handle each one of them and you did not quit the group <laughs> yeah like what like you didn't end up you need it it's so powerful you wow. didn't know that they called you actually to they did they told me because it was after the video with my arsenal t-shirt Yes yes and because the, they've known me when I was 15 years old we've never talked again and then some of them so they had the group like school whatsapp group and they just added me from the blue so I was like hmm, the, who are these people you know then they told me yeah former whatever whatever then they were like hey, now interrogating me sasa wameniweka hapa tio are you gay why are you dancing in these videos why are you always talking about your father blah 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 one by one i told them this is this way that is that way uh uh-huh. next this one even this one is this way they just kept quiet sasa ni kako integrated kwa group sasa ama men you and your place utapata when they're with each other they brag about knowing you or like namjua namjua you know so it's a you need some hits even that's really interesting wow cuz i didn't even expect that cuz you've not told me that before And then you know one of the most interesting things that I find about these trolls is especially even with men they tell me all these things in public but then they are asking for sex from me in my DMs. Mm. Mm. 
Mm. You know? It happens the same inversely. When men, when you post a picture, Sri looking how, oh, I can see your, oh, your dress, nini, nini, nini. but in the DMs, they're trying to get with you. So Ma. it's like, what do you really want? Why are you pretending? Just be yourself. Be your honest self. So it's just the self-hate. These people are, they like you and they're afraid, they're annoyed that the attention is on you. So they want to divert it to be their own conversation. And you see, you can never take it, you can never take away the light from someone that's authentic. Because there's not, he's not copying anyone, he's just being himself. So, wewe ki umwa, nijuwe mwenyewe, unatry, unataka lakini huwezi. So it backfires. Vulnerability in relationships. Ata tulitoka uko You know? Yeah. The people that you... How can we pretend? How can you, Bobby, pretend to love so much, so somebody so much, but you can't be vulnerable with them? That's not love, then. Uh, to okay. me, there's something Rick said. I keep forgetting things, but like there's something Rick said about uki uki kwa kwa mapenzi. When you're in love, you cannot be cunning, mm. sly, mm. Yeah. Mm. clever. You have, it has to be authentic. You have to show up as yourself. There is no other way. Love haina ego, haina anger, haina... The Kunezi verses, Kunezi verses in the Bible, in the Bible, something Corinthians. Love covers all. First Corinthians 13. Yeah, the one that says love is kind, love is patient, love is nini. It's a few things that describes what love is. Basically, I refer it to it to show that love has no negative connotations to it. Love is just pure and authentic and very unconditional. Love just is. It's just something you feel and you show and you do. Ukenza kuingisha siji conditions, siji ego, anger. It takes you away from the course that love is. So when you really, truly love, pretending is very difficult. You'll... It'll have, it, you'll have to put in extra work to pretend. You'll have to lie, delete messages, avoid, uh, be weird. And that's not love. That's, that takes away love. So I feel like you can care about someone. Uh -huh. You can like someone or like, I don't know what, what you can call it. <laughs> uh -huh. But love, love haina iso corners. Love just is. Uh -huh. And it shows it doesn't even need, I don't need to be told Rix loves me. Even if he doesn't talk to me, I'll always just feel because it just is. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> One thing that um, happened to me recently, you know, like the day you brought milk. Mm. So I was, I was broke, mm. okay? And these guys came to my house. And uh, when Jagero was going to the supermarket, he wanted to bring Rix milk. <laughs> And bread. Yeah. Yeah, could you a baby mala? He doesn't do his own shopping. You know, so um nyamwezi to nataka kupika chai. To nataka chai mazio kwa sufria. Mali na magi ugo. You know. So I mean when I was sitting just because they left with the daughter later and stuff and I was just thinking about this act of love that I witnessed here, <laughs> you know, like yeah. this guy, he clearly missed a huge mark yeah. <laughs> in whatever was trying to communicate <laughs> yeah. to me, to feed me, yeah. you know, but the heart behind it yes. was so big. Yes. The act behind it was so uh, mindful. And he mm. did it so thoughtlessly. So thoughtlessly, because me, I didn't expect it. Yeah. You know, me, I just knew he was visiting, mm. you know. I think one of the other reasons people pretend a lot in these relationships is also because relationships have been made to look like commerce. You know, we're in a market, you know, and the highest bidder is the one who... So basically, we're just auctioning each other. <laughs> yeah. Hey, shika yo. Nani? Hey, wait, wait. You know? It's, it's, it's commerce. And we we really are very much distanced from the real human experience mm. regarding our the complexities of our emotions 
right? So, you see, like, for example, when you told me when you wanted to marry your wife, you, you sat down and you were just, you laid it bare. This is who I am. This is where I am. This is what I want to do. And she was like, hey, I have listened to you, blah, blah. People don't do that shit anymore. Mm. We just come with preconceived notions of, oh, a marriage is going to look like this. Even a wedding <laughs> is going to look like this. Nilikuambia huko juzi nilikimbia juu ile wedding niliambiwa mtu amepanga. Do I tell you? Mm-mm. Ule researcher wetu kumuka. <laughs> hey, you know, mtu amepanga wedding yake venye lazima ikuwe hivyo. And you, whatever you think, may not even matter in that moment. But what I'm saying basically is just, is, I mean, it's not that desires are bad, but... Mm. We we need to stop meeting with preconceived ideas of what of who the other person is. is. You know, Granam mm. say mujue. You know, I remember um, somebody I was recently like uh, chatting with, and you know we were just talking about relationships, and she asked me a question that I don't think any woman has ever asked me. She asked, "Na wewe unatakanga nini kwa relationship? Wewe unatakanga nini?" Unajua mara mingi demo anaweza kwa me assume Rix wanaume <laughs> wanatakanga hivi mimi nasikia anga story mingi sana at you what men want is honor respect kia ngoa stuff but maybe me respect is not my number one mm. me maybe i just want I, first of all i want to be slatted out <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah what is slatting out eh what is slatting out do you want to explain to our gentleman <laughs> what <laughs> If you would have filled the form, yeah. and then just you, would form know. Yake you would know. You would know. But too bad. Yeah? Well, what, well, is, what is being slatted out, uh, Roberta? Ntakwambia nyuma ya tent. Well, good sex in, in a nutshell. Mm. <laughs> just good mm. sex. Mm. Um, Slatty. Mm, just be naughty with me. Be Nasty. naughty with me. Be raunchy. And wet. Be naughty. Yeah. Be all those things you know maybe that's what rick's really was maybe that's what top on the list you know but if you come here with honor i don't give a shit for honor because i know who i am already you don't have to pretend to give me honor. i have it already mm. by my existence i already have it mm. so me i usually think these preconceived notions of oh women want this men want this it's all bullshit you get so remove the commercial sense of relationships then we stop performing we stop yeah. performing oh i want to be a man i want to act like this so that this woman keeps staying with me the woman is also there he's she's on stage performing with her body with her mind with how she's dressing but she's tired as fuck because yeah. she doesn't really like you that much mm. because who are you when you're not performing who are you really when you're really just naked in your most natural form and you don't have to explain and prove a point because mm. i discovered actually and these are things even me i've had to do on my own internally when i stopped trying to prove that i'm anything that's when i started becoming something yes i mm. just stopped trying to prove yeah. at that i'm a good man why am i proving that I'm trying so that you can like me so that what that that means we are is we are in commerce I'm trying yeah, to buy it's your likes real. it's not real so what if i just am myself every day i wake up and i'm dancing and i'm writing about those sex things that i like mm. and nothing I'm, underneath and nothing <coughs> underneath and i'm talking yeah. and i'm Love learning and exactly you know because it is in that form that i will meet the real people who see me for who i really am yes you get what i mean i'm not pretending to be a christian because i'm not you get what i mean uliacha mungu mungu aliniacha kwanza so tukatuliacha na tukili mtu aliyeta njia yake ni sawa ni sawa you know i'm not any of those things i am rix and you see when you do that is you asked me last time about curating your own circle mm. of the people around you that's where you need to start because ukiwa ukiwa yourself ukiwa very authentic you start attracting people who are just like you mm. people who now you can't stand pretenders you can't stand the performers you can see it when it's happening you can know oh, say 
ana 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 lalanja lakini ana rent ana haya magari kuonesha washa you can tell you can see it very clearly and you're able to, to remove yourself from such spaces so you attract the best thing about authenticity is it pulls your crowd towards you when you're able to be vulnerable in that state like like i told you the kind of friends i have right now they're just like me we're very similar even if we're different in our own ways um in many other ways we're we're similar in that we all want the best for each other and also it comes from wanting the best for ourselves there's no way as ajitakia mazuri na nitake mwenzangu akwe pabaya if i want good for myself i just extend it to the next person and when we when i'm winning everyone else is winning in my circle because we all it's very intentional it's very rotational so you have to be yourself na hiyo ndo kitu atao ajuangi kama mimi when i was younger growing up i used to lie about where i lived i used to lie about the schools i went to because i also went to churches where everyone was very rich and the circles i was hanging around everyone was very rich even now my friends are way richer than me but something i learned is that the more i kept pretending the less connection i had with these people hata ni danganye sijui na ishirunda aje siezi relate na hizo conversations zao hata ni danganya wapi kuna place uongo yangu inaisha juu sijui sijui ukweli kuna place uongo inaisha kuna mtu ashaiki uliza kuna mtu kuna mtu aliwahi niuliza sijui gpa uko na gpa ya nini hata sikuwa na jo gpa ni nini and i lied like i would lie and lie and it just reached a point unaangalia around you have friends you can't even tell anything you can't even tell them the truth you can't even tell them uh home kila kitu ili auctioniwa kila kitu yenye tuko nayo ili auctioniwa so now we have nothing can i please borrow you a plate you can't even tell your closest friend that so why is why are they your friend why are they your friend if you can't be yourself around them in the most natural state that you come in it's like him when he ha- he was broke Imagine if he, he if he said he's ashamed he can't invite friends. Hange kunywa mala. Ndio mala kwa maji. Fanja uko maji na ugali kwa nyumba. Maji na ugali. You see it seems like a very very uh ina kani kitu ni kani kitu tu tunaweza push push away but hizo uongo wanzi hapo so mimi mm. kanza tuku realize i can't even have real conversations with my friends because i lied and then the thing with lying is that you forget the lies mm. you have to keep them up they grow and once you tell one lie you have to tell another lie to cover the other lie mm. so it becomes a whole string of lies that you cannot keep up with and then one day i just woke up and decided i'm done i'm done lying i have to become myself i have to figure out who i really am so that i can become who i want to be and i stopped lying i started being myself and nikajipata easy spaces na hata kama watu wako richer than me they're just able to be real and even if they're below me they're just real we're all real we show up for each other we show up as ourselves and it's much much easier so now i'm not scared i'm not scared to call my 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 karibu niseme boyfriend niko na ndako na danganya sina boyfriend <laughs> I I can call my friend and be like you friend zone him. He's not my boyfriend. Uh. Or husband. I can only imagine if I'd told uh, if I'd just been open to the people at church <laughs> that where I live. Yeah. You know? Maybe hata wange kuchangia uhame. Maybe wange ona situation yako ni mbaya sana wa kufanyia shopping. You know you, you can never know you we only always see the negative side of things. And that's sad because for me people call it reality at you know reality when they're being very pessimistic <laughs> but when you, <laughs> but when, you sit, when you sit around someone like me <laughs> when you sit around, when you sit around some, most of most of the people who hang around me they say i'm very delusional to uh. me it's not delusion it's my truth it's very real for me because it, the way i live my life everything is positive even if something bad happens to me i always know it's happening so i can learn something and i'm not saying at it's not like um, they call it what do they call it it's not like something like poverty porn ama at kuteseka unafa uteseke ndo vitu poa zikufanyike zi it's just to me it's not negative nikienda ni nishuke matatu ni 
ile ngoma ile ndongo aje unakanyaga unaruka sijui haro unakanyaga kitambo ya pi unit una una ruka una shuka una una yeah they say as if unfortunate no man have a suba those days i was listening to hill song <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> <is> the truth. <laughs> yeah. I started listening to What do they call it? the music that's not Christian? Secular. 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 Yeah. Two years ago. No, not two years ago. No, sometimes back. <laughs> But there is a, there is a, there is a part of my life that did not really connect with the with secular music because we were told a lot over and over again about yeah. the effects of secular music in the church. Illuminati. Yeah. Illuminati. Yeah. That lady that came here was talking about idol worship in such a, a beautiful way. <laughs> and I was like, nataka <laughs> hiyo. She talked about idol worship. Like it is the most beautiful thing. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe you need to ask yourself why do you have that feeling why are you feeling that way question yourself hey. is it something you need to learn more about yeah. so that you can make other decisions mm. or is it just question yourself ask yourself find mm. out more then decide does it make sense or is it weird for you or where where do, do you see it at maybe maybe, maybe maybe we should be able to help our people people that we are in relationships with you are able to tell when somebody is 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 uh is struggling with the authenticity are you able to very tell very easily very easily because you find let me tell you one thing i look out for <laughs> and this is very evident especially in a room full with men and th- i gave the same example last time when you enter a room and you t- you ask a question or you just listen to people speaking you you listen to the kind of conversations they have the women are always trying to ask deeper questions they're always trying to understand why why it's like miriam was asking us about the iPhones and the samsungs yes it seems like a very normal question but you see she wants to understand she went around the table trying to figure out why why is it that <laughs> that's the brand of phone you're using why 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 since i've entered here i've not had any conversation ab- um, with ab- from a man trying to figure out more about someone else mm. them they always know you know why <laughs> you know why it's because you guys are not socialized to show up as yourselves it's not something you do intentionally mm-hmm. but it's something someone from outside can notice very easily if it was just me and miriam in the room tungetoka hapa kama anajua pale naishi ni perfume gani nimepaka naenda wapi nikitoka hapa nilikuwa na nani naivasha you know like Kevin just Okay ya maliza shoot I'm too excited Cheers bro And my friend was telling me last time <laughs> Jujinake. <laughs> 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 yeah so that's how you're able to tell um people who are very ready to be vulnerable mm. they they speak about the things they like or love very easily very openly it's the first thing they say they're very uh generous with information and they're also very uh willing to learn more about other people that's the first thing but men when they sit around they'll just be quiet or eh, bro yeah bro <laughs> 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 that's all and then it ends there or like very inanimate conversations things we can't build up on things we can't go further on so that's what i use when i sit around people and, I just, and i'm just scanning the room i'm always able to tell um that's how I'm always able to tell who's ready to be authentic because of the things they kuna hiyo tu it's like when i this is the first time i'm meeting jix by the way i have known him for so many years but we've never met 
But we were just before the shoot began. We were. I was telling him about how I left my job. Yesterday was my last day, and he kept asking me questions. He wasn't offering much more uh, <laughs> yeah. information about himself. But Ali, Ali, work on some things there. You see, your with that, I can. I know I can continue the conversation further. I know he's someone who's willing to bring me into his mind and tell me how he feels about things and how he sees things because I saw he offered it. But I, I can't say the same about the, like, let's say him. Nasiati tumekosana ama tulaikiani ama tukona beef or anything. Yeah. We just haven't clicked yet or we haven't had a chance to speak. But you see, I can tell. I can already tell the difference between you and him. I can tell who's more willing to sit down with me and have a longer conversation and just open up and be uh, deeper. Uh. So yeah, Evo too, you can notice these things just by watching. By watching? Yeah. You're coming. But, but it starts from you being authentic yourself. Because uh. if I hadn't done the work, I'd probably be like everyone else. Pia mi ningekwa very unaware. Ningekwa unable to tell who's being real with me, who's being authentic, who's lying, who's a pretender. Mm. If you do not do the work with self you cannot spot it out in other people mm. are you into any religion spirituality no. agnostic i'm not, I'm not <laughs> i'd say i'd say i don't want to say this line it's very cliche i'm not religious i'm spiritual but <laughs> but that's how i would describe myself i do not conform to any especially organized religion mm. i hope my mom doesn't watch this <laughs> she will watch <laughs> <laughs> but like so somebody who told me Jacqueline, can we change is it too late to change the thumbnail because my mother hates it i'm like you keep it man yeah. and that's why you see like now i'm speaking knowing my mom is gonna see i just said that as a banter but yeah i know she might see it but i'm ready to be authentic with myself i'm ready to be honest it doesn't matter what feelings she has if she gets annoyed at me then we can have the conversation from there because my parents are very very religious and the they've been trying to get me to go to church and all that but when i grew up and i was able to make my own decisions from the information i have for myself i'm able to decide this is not for me or this is for me and it it's no harm no foul but then someone else would be scared to be seated on this seat to say that i'm not religious why there's going to be backlash in the comments authenticity in a boil down to everything you really have to understand your shit and back it up to death if mm. you believe if this is what you believe for yourself and it works the only other option you have is learning more and doing better not kujishuku ati naenda nga church lakini squeeze nimeacha kuen what are you doing are you religious or not answer the question uh, and be confident yeah. about it thank you very much <laughs> rex <laughs> Yeah, any last words? We are, we are we are coming to the end of this. We want to play and then come back and talk about our sexual stories. <coughs> okay. Roberta, do you have a sexual story that you're going to tell us? She has lots. <laughs> I no, can tell you I can tell you the one from uh, this morning and last night. <laughs> <laughs> His eyes just lit up. <laughs> we are going to play a game fast. <laughs> have you ever played that? No. But my grandfather was really good at it. But we are going to play that now and then come back for the other okay, for the other sure, interview. Sure. Mm-hmm. Did you take your other tea? There is another tea for you and then there's another tea I for I need I need it. Oh, there are two need cups. It. Yeah. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> what to a chai, Sisi? What to a chai? Okay. People of the internet. There's <laughs> 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 a lady who told me that in Kenya. People of the internet. <laughs> it's nice. It's a catchphrase that people can remember. Yeah, yeah. 
Fadila na na time. All right. Who is clo- this camera? Okay. This camera, yeah? This camera, yeah. Thank you very much for the internet. Leo me cheka sana. Yeah, to me cheka sana. You have really laughed at my 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 vulnerability story. To <laughs> 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 but you see when you grow out of it it becomes a story you can tell and laugh about <coughs> meaning it wasn't really yes it was bad but like <laughs> look at it now it's a story mm. and it's funny yeah. you know so you you need to love everything about you that happened to you because mm. it just happened for you if you hadn't gone through Dima Pasi How ngelewa value ya vitu sasa hizi zenye uko nazo Yeah and they sort of knew where they where the yeah, problem was Jamal Kizela eBay <laughs> <laughs> This man every five minutes of his free time ako eBay he's doing online shopping, shopping. Hey! Bro to be honest with you I just I just don't buy all the time I I love You should get me a gift What kind of gift? Can I tell you what I like? Yes. Okay, I'll text it. Wow. <laughs> oh, 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 have a look. <laughs> Let's see if I will struggle and get it. Tafanya mchango kama siwezani nayo. People of the internet, thank you very much for listening to Robbie and 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 Rex. Rex used to be my favorite guest. And a gag. Then you You then 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 I was going to Kisumu and then I I I I googled something and and you are you are you are you are your podcast popped up you know so now I really really enjoy discussing stuff with you guys yeah. Rick's the uh, Agak should have been here to join us for this next conversation which is about sexual stories you know I have a sexual story that I'm going to say <laughs> It's bonkers <laughs> I love it you love it I love it yeah, yeah. Mm. Please share these stories that we are talking about. Please comment. Please subscribe and hit on that notification bell. Because then Google might just love us more. YouTube might love us more, right? Yeah. Mm. Like like YouTube, like Google really loves you. You know? Yeah. If we should plug ourselves shamelessly. Yeah, actually yes. Mm-hmm. Follow the Nothing Underneath podcast. It's a podcast that uh, shares the everyday sex stories of everyday Africans. Really love it. Say that again. Shares what? The <coughs> sex stories of everyday Africans. We just talk about sex there every week. About in you know, people just share their sex experiences, their shames, their fantasies, their desires, just everything. Whether you're married, partnered or a virgin, like all of it is in there. Mm. And I'm on Love and Orgasms, which is a blog and a podcast where I talk about my personal experiences, sex stories, but not their mind. <laughs> and I just I'm trying to navigate uh, the sexual scene and my sex life and I bring other people on board by sharing things that I did not know about so that we can all learn together. So follow me over there so that you guys can learn with me. Hey. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Until another episode. Bye for now. Yeah.